Hello and welcome to another session of Nurse Talks. Cannot be replaced. Today's session I will be talking about reflective writing or how to write a reflective account. Reflective writing or reflection in general is something that is a part of healthcare providers. As healthcare providers we are considered to be reflective practitioners. What this basically means is that sometimes we learn through reflections or through looking back and as well as questioning and we try to also formulate action plan of how we can improve ourselves or how we can make things better or at the same time how we can prevent an error from happening again. We have to write reflective accounts when we need to do our revalidation to maintain our PIN or our registration as a registered nurse. Now as a student it's very very common that you will be encountering requirements or assignments wherein you are required to write essays and it could be essays that require reflection. When it comes to writing an essay, and I know this can be very, very lengthy, it can be 2,000 words to or to 3,000 words, so it can be quite detailed. It's very, very important that you always read your module guide, because when you are in a course, there's always that module guide which specifically says what you need to do in order to pass. Sometimes students fail not because their essays are crap, but it's because they failed to follow the instructions on the module guide. Following the module guide is really key to success as when it comes to passing a module. So always follow the module guide. Another thing when it comes to reflective writing, there are so many frameworks out there that you can use that can help you uh, or it can be used as a guide on how you write your reflection. So in this video, I will be mentioning about Gibbs Cycle. Uh, and it's a framework that can be used for reflection and I know there are other frameworks out there but I choose this because for me uh, I'm more attracted to this Gibbs cycle or reflective cycle because it's more detailed and I think um, it has more components so you can really express better and write uh, more things when it comes to uh, reflective writing. So first thing is always about finding a topic and I know when it comes to finding a topic sometimes it may be difficult because just like writers for example uh, sometimes writers have writer's block and sometimes they have a hard time uh, finding topic and they need inspiration in order to find a topic so if you're a first timer in reflective writing and I know that can be a very normal feeling like you are just having difficulty when it comes to finding a topic but there's so many ways on how you can find a topic it could be through exploration it could also be through observation or reading uh, journals or browsing the internet or even conversing with your colleagues or your classmates sometimes the topics will just pop out and you'll be very lucky enough if uh, this topic pops out uh, then and there uh, at the early stages. So how Gibbs reflective cycle goes is that there are several components and this include description, feelings, evaluation, analysis, conclusion, and action plan. So the first thing is always about describing things. So that's description. So what you need to do is out from that experience that you want to reflect or out from the topic that you want to reflect, all you need to do is actually describe what really happened. Because reflection is about looking back, but at the same time, it's also questioning these things. So in order for you to reflect, you need to describe what happened first. So a good example, or maybe a very common example, is all is about like infection control. So let's say uh, you were working as a student in a clinical unit, could be a ward or let's say it's a ward then and um, you have noticed a healthcare provider going inside their room and considering that that patient is infectious and it is required that all 
healthcare providers should wear the appropriate PPEs or the personal protective equipment. But in this case, you have observed the healthcare provider not wearing the appropriate PPE. And as a student, because you have knowledge, let's say your knowledge is so fresh from university and you, uh, you are very aware on what things that should be followed, but then again, you've seen the staff wherein you, ha you, are, uh, you have assumed that they should actually follow what's in the policy and what is according to standards, but at this time you've observed them as not really wearing the appropriate PPE. So just describe everything because you want to reflect on this and then you want to write about your feelings. What have you felt during that um, situation or during that event? Uh, most common uh, mistakes by students is that sometimes they start writing with feelings first. Uh, so they felt this and that, but then again, without describing what actually happened, if I were the reader of the essay, or if I tried to read the essay, I will question why the person felt this way, with, because I don't know what actually happened. So let's make sure that there is that description that happened first, and there's a narration of events, and make sure this is objective. So there should be no opinion into this case, because you're just really narrating what happened. And then you have your feelings, which is what you felt at the time. So maybe you felt anxious, you felt uh, nervous because it's a staff. You want to tell the staff, but you didn't have the courage to do so because you felt nervous. And you, f yeah, you felt anxious because you don't know what will be the consequences if you were assertive and told the staff. And then next to feelings is you have your evaluation. So what was the good thing about that event or and what are the bad things about that event not really like good things as in a way like uh, like what was a good thing that happened but it's more of like what were the good aspects that you felt out from that experience so it could be like let's say you were challenged out from that experience and when it comes to you being challenged you always want to look for solutions on on how you can improve things or let's say you were challenged and you feel motivated to change uh, these ways. So that's a good thing of that experience because after the experience you saw something that wasn't supposed to happen but then again you felt challenged and you want to change this and you want to formulate plans and how you can change this. So it's, a, it's kind of really a good thing because it has motivated you in a way and motivated you in a way to promote uh, change for the better. And analysis now is more on um, questioning the different angles of the situation. So it could be like uh, one of the questions would be like if it was done differently and if it, it was done according to standard, what are the benefits uh, from that? And if we don't follow the standards or if we don't follow the policies, what could be the consequences? So these are the realizations that can take place out from the experience. So your, real, your realizations, your thoughts. But then again, because it's a reflective writing piece that you're going to submit, let's say, as a requirement in university, these things have to be formal. And when I say formal, so it's really needed that when you have your realizations, these needs to be backed up with references or with evidence-based practice. So you need to look at literature that supports your thoughts. So one example would be, like I don't really have a reference right now, but one example on how you would write this would be like if, if uh, the wearing, like you have realized that wearing of appropriate PPE is important, especially for an infectious patient like this and that, because um, according to this study, uh, wearing of PPE uh, reduces the incidence of transfer of microorganisms from one person to another. And be, let's say there is a study out from this. So you can reference that. You can use the literature that you read that there is this study that was conducted before and wherein there is a significant reduction of the spread of microorganisms from patient to patient when it comes to wearing appropriate PPE. So you want to reference that and you want to use that as a reference to support your realizations out from that experience. Because in the academic world, if it's just really your thoughts and realizations and there are no supporting evidence into this, 
Um, it's just an opinion. So make sure that there are references to support these. And usually it's really in the analysis where a lot of your references can take place. Because the description is basically what just happened. Feelings is basically what you felt and then evaluation can sometimes be still subjective because it's really based on you, based on what you think is good about the experience and also what are the bad aspects about the experience. But when it comes to analysis, these are where the realizations has taken place uh, based on the questioning that you have as well. And then you have the, the conclusion. So conclusion is about your learnings, like what are your learnings out from the experience. Maybe you've learned something out from experiencing that. You've learned that it's very important for you to be assertive next time because if you are not going to be assertive and not going to inform the individual about what has happened, uh, these things would continue. And it could also be that maybe the staff themselves are not really aware of what the policy is because without you asking, you wouldn't really know what's in their head. So. This could be your learnings and then your action plan. What can you do next time to improve the situation? So you can formulate action plan or things or tasks like maybe promoting awareness among the staff as one of your projects or could also be like when you see a similar situation, you're going to be, you're going to tell the staff and tell them about the policies so that they will be aware and these situations wouldn't really happen again. So that's just a very simple example of reflection, but I think it gave you an idea about how you're going to proceed with your uh, reflective writing piece. And with this video, I used Gibbs Reflective Cycle, which is just really one of the frameworks for reflective writing and just really to emphasize that there are so many frameworks out there that you can actually use to write a reflective writing piece or it's really up to you what reflection framework you would like to choose but also very very important that you read your module guide and the instructions uh, written by your lectures because that is also key on how you pass your requirements and I think that's the most important thing is really about following instructions because no matter how good your essay is but if it didn't follow instruction they can still fail you so I think that's a very important um, aspect to consider as well when it comes to your reflective writing so I hope you've learned something from that talk about reflective writing and I hope this will be a very good guide and when it comes to writing reflections but also uh, one of the ways that you can also learn if you really struggle with reflective writing is to look at examples uh, of reflections and there are so many reflective accounts uh, in healthcare that are available online and these are examples or these are templates but be careful as well with what you find online because sometimes some websites may not be reliable so I think on your part or on our part as well when we try to search things online we need to be vigilant enough as well to also evaluate if whether the websites are actually legit and reliable or are they fake websites and unreliable because you know any person can just post online and I think sometimes uh, you know, if we are not careful enough with what we see online and just believing what is really uh, on websites, then we might not actually know that we are actually getting the wrong information. So I think that's also a very, very important thing to consider. So there you have it. That's reflective writing and how to write a reflective piece.